In this video, I want to do two things. I want to provide you with an example of different types of wood cleats that you could use, and maybe one might work better than the other, along with the fact that I have never worked on a job where there was an architect or an engineer involved in the project who allowed wood cleats to be used. Most of the projects I worked on had some type of metal brackets that were used to connect the stringers to the stair treads. Now, with that said, I also want to point out that I have seen the metal brackets fall off and create problems for the stairway also. Which brings me back to the number one and most important part of any set of stairs, and that would be maintenance. You're not going to have these problems as long as you're maintaining and inspecting the stairways regularly looking for any potential problems that could lead to some type of an injury. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the wooden cleats. And one of the problems I'm going to have with them will be if you have something sticking past the tread like this. And I see this often. And this situation here could allow someone's shoe to get stuck underneath here or their foot and then cause them to trip. Now, is that going to be a big problem? I don't know, because you would have to actually be walking next to the side of the stairway. But again, my job is to point these things out. Your job is to figure out what you want to do with the information I'm suggesting. So one of the most common wood cleats is just a 2x4 that's even with the front of the tread and often sticks out behind the tread a little bit or it might even be shaped or even shaped and a little bit larger like this one here. And of course you're going to have more surface area on something like this which will allow you to put more screws or nails into the block making it a little stronger. And of course, the standard 2x4, this is probably one of the most common ones I run into. And next on the list would be something where they shape it on one side or the other. So maybe here at a 45 degree angle. And of course, this could be in a variety of different positions back here, all the way over to the edge of the stringer and on and on and on. I have seen these things done quite a few different ways. And again, another idea of how they could be shaped ending up with the back even with the back of the tread and then of course sticking past a little bit in both directions and then a larger cleat where it would be shaped in the back and maybe shaped in the front and the most common ones I see are 2x4s. I rarely come across a 2x6 or come across something that might be shaped like this. And the last one I want to show you is just a 2x4 cleat that comes in a little bit from the edge of the tread. And now for my choice, I would go with the larger cleat and try to avoid having it stick out past the front. However, if you're looking for a little more strength, you could always run it all the way back, give you a different idea of how it would work there and how it would look from above. Now, I would also like to point out that any one of the wood cleats I previously showed you will probably work just fine if you use good lumber and fasten it securely to the stringer and then of course fasten the tread securely to either the cleat or the stringer also and of course that can be done with nails or lag screws or even screws and you could always use nuts and bolts with washers and they could run all the way through the stringer and the wood cleat however I will not be able to provide you with a method that will work all the time because this isn't a standard construction method approved by most structural engineers. And of course, if the method was approved by a structural engineer, then they would provide you with details for the assembly method. So I won't be able to provide you with nail sizes, screw sizes, or bolt sizes on this one. However, I will be able to suggest that this is the area right here that rots. And for some of you, you're going to want to use some type of an adhesive or or sealant. And if you do, then it wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe run some of this stuff at an angle. And again, this is only a suggestion because once you attach the cleat to the stringer with something like this, it's going to squash all of this stuff and it could squash all this up to here and then create an area that would trap the water anyway. So this right here, I'm not 100% sold on. This 
idea will work better, you can see, because it's not going to allow the water to get trapped that gets past all of this. However, before we consider using this, we need to think of one more thing. And that will be whether or not we could just simply add some type of a sealant above and forget about the rest. Now, is this going to be a good idea? Now, the one thing I have to say about some of our great ideas is that they can create problems for us. And you can see here that if you use some sealant to seal the top of the cleat and then use some more sealant for some additional insurance and something like this is going to work great. However, that might not be the case if you install your tread here because now we're going to have an area that could trap water. Any water that gets between the stringer and the tread could actually get trapped in this area. And of course, I'm pointing this out to prevent some of you from doing this when in reality, all you would need to do would be to put some sealant above here. And I understand that if you don't want any sealant, maybe you're going to be staining the stairway, then in reality, it might not be necessary to apply any sealant and accept the fact that water is going to get behind this area and if it remains trapped there for a long enough period of time that it will probably start to rot the wood where the wood is in direct contact with the other wood and again this seems to be one of the biggest problems with this type of stairway so one thing you could do would be to seal the top and the front of each one of the treads and wood cleats all the way up the entire stairway and then maintain it. Actually inspect the area regularly, maybe three or four times a year. You know, if you live there, you can inspect it almost every day while you're walking up and down the stairway. So before I end the video, let me leave you with the two major points. One of these is that you don't see structural engineers doing this very much or usually using metal brackets. And I have a book you can get at the website on how to build stairs with metal brackets. And if you want to get a little more creative, I also have a book on how to router out or dado the stair stringers so you don't need to use metal brackets or wood cleats because the treads will actually slide into the slots in the stringer. And this is actually one of the best ways you can build a stairway like this. But again, this will depend upon the area where you live, how much snow, how much rain, how dry it is, and stuff like that. Because there could be some other problems problems that I'm not going over in this video for a variety of different stairways. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up right there. And if you learned something from it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Or if you just enjoyed watching the video, hit the thumbs up button.